Hello everybody, hello, Tresden does one, two, three, and welcome back, it is episode number four of Tim Talks Podcast, can't believe we made it already, as I said in my very first episode, a lot of podcasts don't make it past the fourth episode, amazingly, and uh, most don't make it past the fourth episode, or sorry, a lot of podcasts don't make it past the fourth episode, most don't make it past the eighth episode, so we are currently, in, um, you know, halfway to that feat, that goal. Anyways, yeah, I guess, um... Another long week. I'm recording this on the Thursday. I'm going to upload it on the Thursday just because I'm busy on the Friday. So I don't reckon I'll get it done tomorrow. So I'll do it today. You know, same difference. Probably, you know, a little less good mood because it's only a Thursday. Kind of a downer of a day, really. Yeah, it just, it just, it's just a wannabe Friday, isn't it? It's just a wannabe Friday. Friday's just a great day. and You know what I mean? So anyways, we'll we'll get into this one and today I had a little cool idea for topic to discuss. Last week I discussed NBA, this week I'm going to discuss Premier League and um, basically every Premier League team's best player. Should be a little easier knowing that there's only 20 teams to talk about. So without further ado, let's start with the top team at the moment, currently with 71 points. It's Man City. Man City, we all know, they have some ballers on their team, of course. Most notably this season we have the likes of Ilkay Gundogan, who has been absolutely amazing. Kevin De Bruyne, we all know about him. And Sterling, Raheem Sterling. So I'd say they're probably my top three players. Also, I'd honorable mention to Phil Foden and Bernardo Silva. If I were to say who my favourite player is, I would have to say, just based off this season, absolutely incredible, Gundogan. He's just been uh, instrumental in midfield and just stringing everything together, making everything nice. And just me showing how great City can be. I'm just improving themselves from last season. So um, what a baller he is. I mean, stats through the window for this guy. If I just going to him, might as well pop open and show you his stats. A lot harder to see their stats on the Premier League website for some reason. This season he has showing me his full playing career. Why can't you show me this season? Okay, okay, he can. This season, 2021, he has scored 12 goals, which is not is nice. It's very nice. So, um, respect. Put some respect on his name. Number two is Man United, who are not a stone thrower. They are more of a boulders. No, that wouldn't be right. They're a fucking machine gun firing. They're a missiles launch away from City in the league. They're 14 points behind them. I know there's a game in hand or whatever, but they are miles back. But they're still doing well, obviously. But um, nothing special, really. Um, They're playing okay football. To, to good football. I, I will mention that they have a great, a great attack. If you look at it, obviously they have Marcus Rashford. They have Mason Greenwood. They have Bruno Fernandes. I mean, come on. And, yeah, it's overall, it's mainly that midfield attack that really ticks the team together. It would be remiss if I didn't say Bruno Fernandes is their, is their best player. So, so clinical, as you all know. 16 goals this season. Pretty much key to their, their success. I mean, that's a goal a game and assist to boot. But, you know what? Very much a great player. Um, he gets as much hate as he gets love. But... Let's just simplify it, guys. He's good. He's got the stats. Let's not look any further than that. And then one point below them is Leicester City in third place. They have an interesting squad. Uh, they're being one of the least talked about teams this year. Um, obviously, Vardy always gets his mention. He always gets a little bit of hate as well. But he's always a great player. And he just proves it day in, day out. Uh, he really does. Um, I haven't heard much about any much of the other players. Obviously, last year, Thiel Thielmans was a big deal. And I, I would be remiss if I said, you know, oh, this player is really good. I have a great stuff. I haven't really. So I'm going to have to go with Jamie Vardy just by default. He's 34 years old. 34. And he has scored 12 goals this season. So, I mean, what's that one better than Bruno? That's just, just on another level. He's still at the lead level at 34. I mean, who can you say that for apart from Cristiano Ronaldo? That's about it. And maybe Zlatan. Do you know what I mean? All over Europe. All over, That's it. So now we're going to move down five points below to Chelsea, number four. Chelsea have been a team that have underperformed, but somehow they've, they're in fourth. Tuchel's done a good job on them since, obviously, Frank Lampard shit the bed. So <laughs> that's always good to see. Uh, Timo Werner, mm, really disappointing start, uh, start to his career. Five goals in 28 games. That is just absolutely abysmal. 
So obviously Chelsea are really lacking in the striker department. But uh, fortunately, they have Mason Mount, who's a baller. N'Golo Kante, who's also a baller. And yeah, what can I say? Those two, those two players make up for make up a great deal of the unfortunate um, Timo Werner. Well, not unfortunate. He's just crap. But um, yeah, I would definitely have to say Mason Mount is probably the best player. He's only got five goals, but trust me, he is an absolutely baller. And um, remember the goals go against Liverpool. That just shows his skill, his quality. He can just pull it out of the bag any day of the week. 22 years old. Got a lot more to prove as well. Number five, West Ham. They're my team. Um, I don't know how they're fifth. I'm kind of amazed by that. But yeah, we are fifth and we're not dropping below that. Um, hopefully. Uh, 49 points, just below Chelsea, just above Spurs. you got to love it. And yeah, what, wow, it's just been a really good year for West Ham. I mean, it's been amazing. So where do I point to all that success? Well, for one, there's been a lot of reasons for our success. You know, oh, Antonio's been firing. Um, Declan Rice has been great as usual. Thomas Tuchek has been an amazing addition. Jesse Lingard has been absolutely unbelievable. Those players, would I, I would point to, as well as Aaron Cresswell. But for the most part, for the most part, our success, our grit, our determination, our resilience, it all comes back to Thomas Socek. The 26-year-old, he came into West Ham last year, only scored three goals, but this year he's become gone firing nine goals in 29 appearances. He's also, uh, I don't think he's got any assists, but he's been an absolutely instrumental in that midfield. One of the best midfields in the league, probably up there. I was just thinking about there, probably top five midfields in the Premier League alongside Declan Rice and Jesse Lingard. I mean, it's just, he's still in his prime of his career. Uh, he just scored a hat-trick there for Czech Republic. It's incredible. And he's got a ways to go. So, um, big up. And number six, we have Tottenham Hotspur. There is interesting, because we all like to shit on them, as you know, oh, you know, they really aren't doing well. They're just barely behind us. They, they can nearly catch up with Chelsea. It's just one of those weird years where, you know, they could be having an absolute abysmal time and then perk up at the right time and then they look great and you know what I mean it's like peaks and troughs as opposed to sort of a more smooth sailing so I mean Sun Hu Sun Hu Ming is just great he's a great player and um, you don't really see many people pointing him to him as the player of the year but easily could be him it easily could be Harry Kane this is definitely one of those two man teams and when you hear the you know rumours that Harry Kane's leaving, that's when you know he's having a good season as well. Um, Gareth Bale, not so good. Deli Alli really hasn't performed this year. Eric Lamella's been okay. But yeah, this is a two-man team. This really is, which is crazy because being so reliant on those two players, they get injured, you know. Say goodbye to your Champions League ambitions. But um, I mean, I would be absolutely wrong if I said anyone else beside Harry Kane. He is great I, and it pains me to say as a West Ham player he's nearly 28 he's in the prime of his career he is at the peak going scoring years 17 goals and 27 appearances but it's weird because this is completely normal for Harry Kane this is just what he does if you look at the last few years you know 18, go 18 goals last year 17 the year before 30 the year before that 29 the year before that 25 21 the year before that he's basically been above you know nearly double players every year apart from one one or two since you know 2014 15 so he's been hovering at that level, that skill quality level. Uh, number seven is the disappointing but understandable Liverpool. Liverpool were the team everyone talked about, the talk of the town, and they just ruled the roost really. But obviously since the, since the defenders, um, since the lack of Anfield in my opinion, the Anfield crowd, which no one talks about, but I think it's a big reason for their losses. Just a burnout from Klopp. A lot of reasons. We can go on for days talking about the reasons. But basically, Liverpool have not performed near the level they should be. And in my opinion, they should be performing at a bigger level than they are, even with their current situation. Um, but you have to see. I think they will finish a bit higher. I think they'll finish fifth, just ahead of West Ham. But we'll see. We'll see. And looking at their team, they have Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane, Firmino. Um, but obviously, the only one I can really say performing at elite level is probably Salah. I mean, look at his stats. He's hasn't been talked about that much. 17 goals in 28 appearances. That is elite. That is proper good. That's up there with what's well, up there with Harry Kane for goal scoring ability. A uh, little shout out goes to Jota. He's only 24 and he's already got six goals um, with with Liverpool. So I really, really. I'm happy with them. And also shout out to Thiago. I mean, he gets a lot of hate. He's nearly 30 and he's doing such interesting, um, skilled 
moves out there on the pitch that are just no other player can do what he can do really so I'm really impressed with him a lot of disappointing players this season but again a lot of injuries and a lot of lack of cohesion in this team so I in some ways I have to commend that they've kept they kept the ball rolling for some of the players at least and and they are in position where they can easily probably not I mean top four isn't completely out of reach they're only five points off it um but obviously title race is well and truly done number eight Everton uh yeah, it's another team that had a very hot start to the season, like Liverpool, but has sort of simmered off a little bit, and they were the most hyped up team, and I was actually sick hearing, sick of death to hearing about them, as well as Spurs, really. There's just a lot of um, talk about them over the summer, their, their signings, you know, Alan's kind of cooled off a little bit, uh, Hamas Rodriguez, I mean, you don't really hear much about him these days, but of course, the one that really was talked about a good bit, and is still performing at the great level, is Dominic Calvert-Lewin. 14 goals and 25 appearances that can't, that can't be sniffed at really and you man he, he did suffer a few injuries so that's, that's that's just great to be honest so yeah Dominic Calvert-Lewin I think he stands above the rest pretty easily you know Hamas has been a bit of a disappointment and there's a lot of there's a lot of we don't really talk about this very often but there's a lot of players that have just not performed at uh, Everton even um, that have been hyped up or bought at extreme prices you know Jordan Bickford obvious example uh, Yerry Mina, you know, Luca Dean. Luca Dean's been okay, but nothing too special. Uh, look at Sigerson, you know, he had a good last season, but he's kind of dropped off. Andre Gomez, they picked, picked him up for big money, I believe. And, you know, a lot of players, I was like, oh, I love them at West Ham. Iwobi, even, but Bernard, Joshua King, even. I don't know who he signed recently, but Jesus, man, there, there's just been a lot of disappointment around Everton at the moment, even though they're doing fairly well. You know, they're within reach of that top four once it was as well so number nine we have <laughs> number nine we have everton or everton arsenal i mean if you believe everton arsenal will be there sitting in ninth going you know what um not the worst season ever. well not the worst season ever but they're sort of comfortable there nearly it's so odd seeing arsenal a star club probably the third biggest club in england just be sitting there in ninth going yeah this is normal <laughs> obviously it's a bit abnormal but you know, if we saw them outside the top four, we wouldn't be too surprised, really. And that's the state of Arsenal at the moment. I mean, what's gone wrong? It's just an uncohesive team. There's little gems in there, little golden bits. But we just haven't seen them develop. Apart from this one player, but Bukayo Sako. hope I'm pronouncing that right. He is 19 years old. I repeat that. 19 years old. And the stuff he's doing is absolutely incredible. Only five goals now this year. But let me tell you, he's throwing out the assists. He's he's just Dyson, Dyson, and just destroying people out there. And he's a great player. Uh, he's absolutely incredible. Honorable mention to Reese Nelson. He's only made two appearances, but you know, I think he will have some some to show. There's Nikita and Nikita. They really are just gone full on, um, full on with the uh, the youth, like Ar like Ireland. But they actually have players at their disposal. Um, I'm big. Disappointment this season has been Aubameyang. He has scored nine goals, but yeah, nowhere near his, his previous levels. Look, 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 look at what Aubameyang did last year. He won them the FA Cup. His previous two years, he scored twenty-two goals, twenty-two goals, and he came on loan the year before that and scored ten. That is a mad stats there. They are for like Arsenal. That's, that's that really is going back to the elite levels. But it's just they don't have the team around them really yet. Um, obviously Aubameyang is going to be gone in a few years and you know a year or two and then you're going to have to rely on Sacco and then you, you know what I mean Odegaard maybe he'll make a difference but I don't know um, Lacazette's been okay 11 goals and 25 you know not Aubameyang levels but yeah pretty good uh, Thomas Partey is kind of disappointed kind of not really bad but uh, Odegaard he's a baller I think but he hasn't played that much so I'm not really going to judge him yet Ceballos I mean what the hell 57 appearances for Arsenal and not much not much there really <laughs> oh yeah you couldn't have made 57 appearances this year that that's wrong that doesn't make any sense anyway yeah I just uh, there hasn't been much buzz around Arsenal really at all it's like they've been we're just expecting them to be bad so we just don't talk about them apart from you know Sacco the young lads cool but all the other people are really kind of underperforming. number 10 Aston Villa also a really hot start around the middle of the season and like West Ham they were in that relegation zone last year but they've seemed to pick it up, pick up the pieces and ran forward a little bit and kind of, you know, they're in a position where they're safe, but I can't see them making a rush 
for that top seven, six or seven teams. So it's very sort of comfy, but otherwise I'd say disappointing year for Aston Villa. Um, if you really think about it, they have ambitions. But again, I think West Ham shall all over those ambitions when we beat them 3-1. What a game for us, by the way. Um, Jack Grealish, man, he is... He's on another level. He needs a big move next year. I think Aston Villa are all, all expecting that. Uh, six goals this year. Eight goals last year. An assist to boot. I think about six or seven assists as well. Um, wow, what a big squad they have here. But a lot of crap in their squad. It really is. Uh, Ollie Watkins is probably the only player I could be like, yep, you're a beast. Ten goals and 28. And you know what? Ollie Watkins, you're a beast. You've won lots of points of the team. I could take Grealish, you know, oh, he's the best player which is probably fair, but uh, I'm going to give to Ollie Watkins because I just think, do you know what, Ollie Watkins, you are decent. You are double decent. And I've got, did I mention last name Arsenal, Saka, special player? Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, El Ghazazi, nah, I'm not having it, I'm not having it. <laughs> uh, you know, John McGinn, is John McGinn that good? He used to be good, but uh, I don't know. Uh, there is Tyron Mings. Yeah, he's okay, but um, I guess Ross Barkley. That was a good move for them. He's in in his basically in the prime of his career, and he's um, he he, he can uh, he can throw a bit of energy out there on the pitch. I I just didn't realize that he was thrown away from what was it Everton Chelsea for what twenty seven years old. That's kind of criminal. I know he's underperforming, but seriously. Uh, number 11, we have Leeds, Leeds United. Uh, this was their big promotion year, a lot of talk about Bielsa, and a lot of celebration of Leeds, really. I've never remember a year where so many teams were celebrated for doing so well, like like overperforming. And it's one of those teams that has done just that. Even though it's mid-table, it's a very solid mid-table, and it's a very entertaining mid-table team. And we'd love to see them, because the mid-table to low, like lower league is kind of boring at times, but this team really is interesting. Rafinha has been absolutely amazing to watch. I've been watching him against West Ham. He was threatening so many times to score. Six, only six goals in 24. But um, he should be scoring more than that, really, in all honesty. Patrick Bamford has just been clinical, like a doctor. 14 goals in 29 appearances. No one, everyone said, oh, this is going to wear off. This is going to wear off. And he just kept on scoring and just proving people wrong. Time after time after time. And I would be absolutely right in saying he's the best player so enough said also quick mention to Maslier great goalie just great goalie he's a French goalie he's only 21 and didn't know he was that young but that's great great to see that youth of goalies coming through and he'll definitely probably be seeing a big move but as he's because him as a top goalie we'll see it's left as hell Number 12, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. Uh, look, they are such a boring team. They really are. Uh, Wilfred Zaha is there. He scored a few goals. They had a little bit of a run at the start of the season where we're like, oh, Crystal Palace. Not being their usual shit selves. But then we just realized, oh, it's, it's Crystal Palace again. Uh, Zaha has been amazing. Nine goals, twenty-one appearances. He's been the bright spot, 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 <laughs> spot, spot in an otherwise boring situation. And like a lot of these mid-table teams, they might have one or two like decent players. Uh, the other one being Ebre Etse. But again, Etse had like an amazing sort of, I would say, Hamas Rodriguez level hype near the start of the season, and he sort of just simmered down while Zaha has been remained fairly good. But yeah, this team is just, they're, they need a new manager, they need some new cohesion, it's just a lot of players that maybe some have potential, some are good, but most of all, you know, just like Avila, it's like it needs some sort of turnaround or something happening or just some, some rejigging of things and just an overall sense of where are you going with this team, like West Ham is clear, you know, this team starts with the defence and then counterattacks and, and nicks goals and plays hard, heavy heavy football, uh, unpretty at times. But this team is sort of like, they're trying to be defensive, but they have these fun attacking players that can't be utilized in that system. It's it's, it's stupid, but it's not a team I'm necessarily hyped or enjoying watching. Number 13, the most disappointing team this season, Wolverhampton Wanderers. And it's clear why, obviously, a horrific injury to Jimenez saw him uh, not perform, uh, not be able to play, actually. 
horrific head injury. And of course, Jota, Diogo Jota, <laughs> left the roost. But um, I was thinking, you know, this team should still surely perform at a certain level. You know, um, and Adama Traore, you know, everyone's going, oh, what's happened to him? He really has not done nearly as much as he did last year and partly due to the lack of him and and Jota making that system where there were opportunities being created for him I remember watching Wolves last year and seeing they were one of the most prolific scoring team, or not scoring but chances created teams out there also their squad was very you know, week in week out consistent, just like West Ham's here but um, yeah, no goals for uh, for Traore and an overall lack of quality from him he's the thing is though he has great chances he just hasn't put them away and i'm not sure why the reason for that is specifically uh neto has been there he's been on the team five goals in 29 it's just not good enough really you're not going to rely on him as your main i think what wolves lacked was a certain transfer being made i know of course in this covid age we can't rely on you know big transfers whatever but i just think one one or two transfers is cheap enough just you know sort of get your thinking caps on, get someone on the cheap. But like even Ruben Neves has had a sort of meh season. Pedence, you know, these people that were particularly excited about, but it's just been a sort of, a, I don't know what the word is, but disappointment for sure. They brought in Key Jana Huever from, from Liverpool on loan. God, I, I just... What was the point of doing that? I, 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 I don't know. He's, he's, your defense was already solid enough. I don't understand why you needed him, but sure. You know, it's interesting because following on from a great year, sometimes you can become a bit complacent. And I think that's what happened to Wolves. They one or two solid, very, very good years. And just overall, it's a burnout or whatever it is. Maybe they need some real transfer activity just to shake that up a bit. But... It's a bit of a mind uh, boggler, that one, really. Number 14, Southampton. It's crazy to think that Southampton were top of the league, what, four months ago? They were they were up there. And we're going Southampton now. Danny Ings, Danny Ings. Does it again. Ward Prowse, great player. But <laughs> they've completely dropped off a cliff. Also, I forgot to mention uh, Wolves' is best player. I, I, I forgot the, the whole point of this thing. Uh, I guess it's going to have to be... Um, God, this is a tough one. Really hard with Wolves just to be even to point out a player I like <laughs> to watch. Uh, God, I can't say Raul him as he's injured. I guess Connor Cody because he's been so consistent and just he's just maintained himself like like unlike the other players. But anyways, Southampton. Ah, oh God, let me see here. Uh, obviously Danny Ings, great, great player. Kind of simmered off a bit. Eight goals, twenty-two. You'd expect more from him considering last year he had what. 22 goals, and then here you're over that 22 again. Uh, Liverpool, they should never have gotten rid of him. I don't care if he thought he was injured or whatever. Oh, he's a risk. Just keep him on the wages and just wait. Because he would, definitely would have been that bench boost that they wanted. One of their big regrets, I'd say. Uh, I mean, they got Manamino. He's been okay. Theo Walcott, okay. Obafemi, Che Adams uh, have been there. Che Adams actually had a good season. Seven goals and 28. That's not bad. Um, I say M a lot, don't I? But yeah, James Ward Pouse, some great set piece goals. It's been a really entertaining player. Seven goals in twenty nine. I will st- still say Danny Ings just because he's done it. He has done a good, good, good job. But um, no, I'll say I'll say Ward Pouse because I really have like just been happy and just over over all excited from his performances. So just there's a lot of hype around him, and you know, obviously he's English. That's gonna come with the territory. But still, I think he's actually a really good player so there we go number 15 Burnley it's starting to get a bit boring and a bit oh, I don't even know much about these teams but Burnley possibly the toughest one yet because ah oh, it's just a boring defender driven team with no real attacking talent at all uh, oh god I, I don't know where to start with this team uh, fuck fuck me fuck me is probably one of the words but they did beat Liverpool so I mean well done. That's, that's that's an achievement. I didn't know Chris Wood was from New Zealand. I actually never knew that. Oh, sorry, Australia. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, there you go. There, there is something you didn't know. But um, I'm sure you didn't know about Burnley. That, uh, that 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 is the case. I will say Dwight McNeil. He scored a great goal against. I think it was against Liverpool. Was it? 
But um, that's his second goal of the season. He's, he's been a baller. I think he is a baller. Uh, although not a prolific baller, he is a baller. He's only 21 and, you know, carries himself around like a, he's a lot older. Um, Eric Peters, you know, the good defenders, Tarkowski. Oh, God. I just don't know. I think I've heard good stuff about our our boy, Dwight McNeil. So I'm going to say Dwight McNeil. Just, <laughs> they don't score goals, do they? Um, they don't make it easy for themselves. I do think they're fairly safe from relegation. They're seven points above relegation with a game in hand. Yeah, they'll be okay. It's going to be another boring season for you Burnley fans. I don't think you're familiar with an exciting season. So there you go. Another boring season for Burnley. Brighton, Hove, Albion. Brighton and Hove, Albion. Is there any players on Brighton, Hove, Albion? There'll be one or two players I've heard of, surely. Mope has been moping around this season because he's been... Meh. 27... Eight goals and 27 appearances. You know what? I'll give it to him. For a lower league team, that's probably okay. But probably not, because you probably need more more, uh, more uh, delivery, I think. But uh, hey, 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 if it's going to do it, it's going to do it, you know? Don't know what I'm saying, but uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so Mopay has been the only player I've heard of. They got Den Dunker. Or is that different Den Dunker? This guy was a baller, and he hasn't played for, what, for some, a single time. Wow. Pascal Gross is there. He's grossly overrated. <laughs> oh, I've done that there. I don't know. Maybe he isn't. And, yeah, Lewis Dunk has played football this year. So, there you go. Uh, I would... I would oh, Lamte. Lamte has started off the season as well. Another player who got so much hype, and he's only played 11 times. Like, what the hell? We were like, oh, this player's going to do it all. He's going to be the best player ever. And you know what? He's not. He definitely isn't the best player ever. But yeah, uh, look. I guess big ups. Give it up to um, to our boy, Neil Mope, the the, the, the the bad man. I won't, I won't curse, but he is a bad man. He done some bad stuff. Circa that Arsenal game where he was sort of a, a dick in that game, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, wouldn't be a lot like a lad I would like to run into on a night out <laughs> after a long night out, maybe 2 a.m. On, on a dark Dublin street. I can tell you that, I don't know why he'd be in Dublin, but. <laughs> right, moving on to number 16, I want to say 16. Number 17, Newcastle United. They currently find themselves on 28 points. Sort of in that. They're in, a, they're in a relegation fight, guys. Who would have thought Newcastle? They've always been a mid table, mediocre team. Would be find themselves down bottom again. I suppose they are usually <laughs> every season like a relegation battle, but they always know they're safe. Do you know what I mean? It's Newcastle. Newcastle. They'll never they'll never go down, will they? Couldn't couldn't imagine it. Um they're too they're too Premier League to be gone. But no, Newcastle have been a team. But I guess everyone's gonna be disappointed. Dubravka's been there, you know, Darlow, they've been solid team. Uh, yeah, yeah, keepers. Shar Lasselles have been held up the defence. Matty Longstaff haven't heard much about him. Mustn't be that good. Almiron, you know, Almiron. There's so many players who had a very solid last year. You know, Andy Carroll brought in would okay, not much hype, but not much hope, but maybe just a little bit of a bench boost or something. But you know, a lot more has been expected. Callum Wilson. Uh, oh, okay, Callum Wilson. I will say this about Callum Wilson. What a baller he is. 21 appearances, 10 goals. But it was all there to start a season. It was all the hype. It was all that sort of early season hope. But I did think it fell off a cliff a little bit. I mean, you really can't be putting all your hopes in Callum Wilson. He is a great player, don't get me wrong. But he's 29. And he's a striker. And he's not going to have the pace he once did have. And look, I will say, you know... There's a thing called developing youth, and I don't think Newcastle have really heard of it <laughs> since Matty Longstaff. Uh, <laughs> so buying in these washed up, you know, strikers in the hopes that they'll stay up is probably not the best option in the world. I think there are better ways of going around it, you know, maybe getting a, getting a mix of youth and, and age. I think they've gotten that wrong. But uh, Newcastle... Do we still do? I think they'll stay up. There's Fulham, you know, just just on their backs, and inevitably Fulham look exciting. Ultimately, though, I do think Newcastle will stay up with the uh, what's the word by the um, skin of their teeth, and I don't 
know why. I just have the feeling they're more defensive, they're more boring than Fulham, and I think that will help them in the long run. If you want to survive a relegation attack, uh, fight, it's not about being exciting, it's about being safe, but grinding out results. And I do think Newcastle are better at that than Fulham, unfortunately. But Fulham I like, but they are the epitome of a yo-yo club, always up and down. Although I do like them, Fulham are, yeah. Fulham are, yeah. That's the word I'd use. It's like, oh my god. You know, this is an exciting little team. If it was in the championship, it would be balling. It was balling last year. It's not built for the Premier League, though, unfortunately. Um, you know you're going to get results. They're too easy to roll over. And they've got some you know, young ballers. Mitrovic is also always a great player. I actually want to see how he's getting on this season. See how the lad's getting on. Oh, he's, he's getting on crap. So basically, Mitrovic is pile of poo. He can do it against crap people. He cannot do it against good players. 26 years old. One of the most, un uh, I guess I, I guess you would say overrated players out there, Mit Mitrovic. Although I don't really, <laughs> I don't really think people at this stage rate him. Uh, Maja, you know, he's he's a young lad. He could be good. Same with Luckman. He could be good, but again, at the, at the moment, you can't be relying on these players. You you really can't. Bobby Reed has had a good season. Uh, Twenty five appearances, five goals for like, oh, not really, I suppose. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> he's in his prime of his career. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> Aguisa was bought in with much hope. But he's just sat on his arse. He really has, though. He's done absolutely nothing with his team. Uh, yeah, that's about it, lads. Kind of a pathetic team. I'm not going to lie. Ariola has been a good defender. You know what? Best, pl best player this of Fulham? Ariola. Alfonso Ariola. He's been a solid... Uh, if you play fantasy football, he's been a solid player on that. So I, I rate him from for that specific reason. I really do. Uh, he's played pretty much every game this season, I believe, over Rodak. Yeah, 29 appearances. Fair play, Ariola. Number 19, and a team that is destined to get relegated. Worst Bram, West, West Bram, uh, where are you call them? West Brom. <laughs> Big Sam's first failed um, Premier League team, and that's sweet to say, actually. It's very sweet to say. Because this team sucks. Sucks bad. <laughs> Yeah, you got the likes of Callum Robinson. You got the likes of... Look, he's an Irish player. I think he's a good player. But he's not a Premier League player by any stretch of the imagination. They took on Robert Sangras, I forgot, from West Ham. He's just waiting away, you know, the rest of his career. 33. He's, I'll take I'll take this last paycheck. Grady Dean Ghana. He's got a cool name. One goal, though. One goal for Grady Dean Ghana. Poor lad. Should have stayed at West Ham, mate. Yeah, should have stayed. I think we actually booted him out of West Ham. And I feel bad, but at the same time, he's not performed nearly at any any real level. And I remember the first game week I think he scored. I was like, oh, here we go. We should have kept that lad. And then he just was crap afterwards. So, best player, West Brom. Oh, this is hard. This is extremely hard. I can't think of a single player. They have Andy Larnigan on from what, loan? From Liverpool? I think he's still at Liverpool. No, he got signed with, Liverpool, with West Brom. But he's, you know, he's 37 Andy Lonergan is 37. i got to repeat that again. Andy Lonergan is 37. Uh, saying their best player is a really tough choice. Again, I, I'm not paying those any stats. But... Yeah, I just think Robinson is a bit of a baller. I just saw him play there with uh, Ireland. I know it's Ireland, but you know he actually was the only bright shining light beside Alan Brown. So I guess, yeah, I guess by default, Callum Robinson is their best player. And Sheffield United on 14 points. Somehow not performing as badly as they used to. They were, you know, the worst team ever for a while there. But now they've actually mounted up a few points. And they're sort of less embarrassing when they get relegated. But um, let's look at their team here. They've got Aaron Ramsdale. He's obviously, we all kind of rate him a bit. Uh, 29 appearances. He's been a consistent in, in, the, in the, the sticks for a team that do concede a lot of goals. Johnny Egan, uh, Irish player was behind a great season last season uh, not so much this season I mean if you're defending on that team you, you, you can't be that good obviously their overlapping defenders was a big hit last year but this year it's been found out it's been discovered uh, I will say you know McGoldrick been a little bit of a bright light there six goals in 26 appearances which is you know what it could be worse it really could be so I will say 
probably going to have to say McGoldrick is their best player, which is a bit grim because he doesn't even play for Ireland anymore. <laughs> but uh, that's how it is. Anyways, that is my list. That is my Premier League teams and their you know, best ones, worst ones, whatever. Best player. So I've done the NBA, did the Premier League. God, they were both exhausting to do, <laughs> to be fair to them. Um, But yeah, I guess that's that done and out of the way. Uh, cut to another segment. Have I been listening to much music this week? Really haven't been. Uh, a few podcasts here and there. What I have done is I've gotten the free trial for Audible for um, this month. And so I have been plugging in and listening away to uh, a new book, which I downloaded there. I've listened to a few hours of it, I'll tell you now, uh, on my phone. And it is called Mythos. It is by Stephen Fry. And I will mention this right now. Stephen Fry is one of the best voices for audiobooks ever. I remember in my childhood, I used to listen to Harry Potter books by him. So, uh, yeah, oh, he's, just, he's just great, mate. He's, he, he is just great. I'll give you a little little uh, preview right there. At the great arena at the summit of Mount Olympus. The Olympians. Two great thrones face ten smaller ones. Each is now occupied by a god or goddess. Zeus reaches out his left hand for Hera to take. Megala Kazania, literally large kettles, and to this day a rewarding sight for... You, you know what I mean, though? That is amazing. The voice is just so soothing, so smooth, and it's, it's bang on. It's great. And so I've been listening to that. It's basically a book about the Roman gods, not the Roman gods, the Greek gods, I messed that one up, and basically the history of them, so we go through the beginning, um, you know, just different stories really that follow on from that, so you've heard of a few of the names, you know, Zeus, Athena, etc, but they just have all these interesting origins for each god, and what I find the most interesting is learning the namesake, and uh, you know, things in our society that came from those names. Uh, so it's really interesting like the plants and stuff like that and just also like their ability as a god they all get a certain ability and how that relates to our life and he does just not it's not just your own boring mythology stories it's told in a very interesting relatable and great way and i think he sort of makes it interesting he relates back to life he keeps it current he keeps it fun he keeps it informal in a way that i really enjoy so i would definitely say great recommendation there mythos i'm only about three hours into it so i have a ways to go but every time i go for my walks and my swims i will listen to that on the way over so yeah that's a, a, a top recommendation right there uh to re keep you plugged in i am still uh i'm still doing my swims day 39 just completed so uh on the way to 50 and yeah beyond uh in terms of tv shows i'm still watching breaking bad so that's cool uh, great show, but it's uh, heating up now. Only about four episodes left, and obviously, you know, I'm nearly done. So I'll get my run down on that probably next week. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Ibs Cat recently. I mentioned him before. Uh, he's been doing some cool stuff. I watched his 50 biggest cities in America, which was a good one, and also 50 biggest cities in Europe, which is another one. A good few surprises in there, like cities you wouldn't expect to be in there, like little Russian cities that have mad populations that you just never heard of. Like Vol Volgrad, I, I guess Stalingrad, you would have heard of that. But there's another one, uh, Karchenitsa or something like that in Poland, which I've never heard of. Uh, and America, you know, it's pretty by the by, understandable. But uh, it's weird how you know more American cities than European cities, which is kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's true. Uh, and that's that, really. Uh, yeah, so it's been an interesting week in the life of me. And... I guess, yeah, I've just been working away, doing a bit of gardening, this and that, around the house, and just doing stuff. So, yeah, that's that's been me, pre pretty much. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Another shortish one this week. It was, you know, obviously, kind of boring, uh, boring stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, I think I would just keep it to the good stuff and uh, keep the energy high. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys next week. So, uh, without further ado, thanks for... Thanks for talking, guys. See you later.